When I bought my Lagoon catamaran, one of the major factors influencing the purchase of a Lagoon was the fact that they don't get osmosis. They have a vinyl ester uh, resin used in the hull that is supposed to stop it happening. This isn't the case as you'll see. Lagoons do get blisters and osmosis. And I've put together these clips basically to uh, show how we found it, the process to remove it, as well as some of the uh, things like I found you need to use a torch at night time to shine down the side of the hull to see the last few blisters and then grind them out. But the primary cause of my problem seems to be a very bad um, finish in the factory, particularly of the gel coat, which had huge amounts of porosity in places. But not only that, but the random chop mat that's under the gel coat between that and the laminate had dry patches all through it, lots and lots of air bubbles. And basically all this contributed with the fact that I hadn't replaced or the boat hasn't had the barrier coat replaced, but the moisture simply got through the fractured barrier coat or where it's been damaged or just the, the breakdown of it. And then it's just poured through the gel coat. As you can see, there's uh, holes everywhere for it. So uh, anyway, it's not really a proper production video. It's just a whole heap of clips I put together with the refinishing process. Hopefully it might help you not get in the same position yourself. So not all of the hull had these dry voids and, and, and uh, blist, uh, blisters. Some of the gel coat was quite sound, maybe half of it. But wherever it was, um, pocky or um, yeah, porous is the word, air bubbles in it. Uh, the water had got through and then there'd be uh, spots of dry random chop mat underneath that would also be quite, uh, would, would be where a blister would eventuate from. So actually if you look just here, you can see in the corner of where I've been grinding here, I've left some dry grass, dry glass from my finger. That's the random chop mat that hasn't been uh, taken out completely yet. But basically everywhere where that is under the gel coat is where it forms one of the tiny blisters that are, if they're not visible now, you will get to see them using the torch technique at night time. As once again down here, some areas of the now these red dots is where as I where is where I've identified blisters that need to be ground out that you can't actually see in the daylight. Some of you can just see them, but there's lots of them. And you've got to be aware too, this is the boat's hull after it's been sandblasted to get rid of all the anti fouls. So the sandblasting where it's good sound gel coat only just fluffs up the surface. But where it's porous or where it's got no guts to it, it just blasts straight through, including the dry glass underneath. So some of it was bloody terrible. But uh, yeah, just a bad layup from the factory and really crap attention to detail when they finished this. They must have done a hell of a lot of bogging with uh, gel coat afterwards to finish it up so that it looks good. And I dare say there's other parts above the waterline that will be the same, but they're not getting moisture in, so they're not going to be a problem. They're just the air bubbles you have to fix as you go on. But uh, anyway, yeah, the next bit coming up is where I show you the uh, technique to um, spot. It. Now, these blisters kept coming three or four days later. You know, you grind them all out, then you go through the next night and get another 60 and then 20 and then two nights later, none. And then two nights later, another 100. So we ended up with like two and a half, 3,000 blisters in the end. But probably only about 10% of them had water in them in the end. The first few big ones had heaps. But then uh, as we went through, now this took four weeks on the hard stand of grinding every day, drying out. We had some great weather for drying, which was a godsend. But um, we also took moisture meters all the way through, but uh, moisture meter readings to see what the whole content was. But uh, okay, so here's the process of checking your hull at night time, once it's been sandblasted and you've taken off the blisters that you can see by eye, you get a small narrow beam LED torch and you hold it flat against the hull. Now where these red dots are, I've already identified them. The red marks the texture and they're about to be ground out, but I'm just gonna show you here, when you shine this torch, 
down the side of the hull. You watch, look how, look how much the blisters stand out now. So it's just like dog's balls. So there they are. It's like moon craters. So in the, in the light, you can't see them. But as soon as you put the torch flat at night time, they're everywhere. And it's so easy just to walk along the hull at night time. It took about an hour each night, I guess. And just shine the torch down. And every time you see a little lump, put a red texture mark on it. And then the next day, you just... Uh, grind them all out and underneath each one of those bumps pretty much at this stage uh, was dry fiberglass so moisture got in hadn't reacted with solutes or glycols or any uncured resins just caused the separation of the gel coat and it blisters up when it comes out of the water and uh, I guess they dried out by but then you'll go a few days like I said nothing at all and then all of a sudden whether it's a temperature humidity I don't know but in the end, yeah, three to four weeks on the hard stand, drying all this out, grinding all these blisters. Uh, and before we decided to start refinishing, we went, we went five days, I think it was five or six days, all the moisture readings below 10% comparison, comparative rate I'll mention. And I'll show you more about the moisture meter in a minute, which is a necessary part. But yeah, then we started doing the refinishing process of sealing it all up with epoxy and repairing any small parts where the grinder had got down to a fabric. So here's one of the test reference spots. We've got the Tramex meter showing 10%. Um, and anywhere where it's kind of where it is there now, we figured it was acceptable. That's a bit high there, so that would have dried out over a period of time. But the areas where you can see just uh, brown fiberglass in the background, that's the random chopped mat, but the gel coat just disintegrated with the... Uh, with the uh, um, uh, sandblaster hitting it. So this test reference spot was simply a spot that I ground back very good gel coat to find no voids, no blistering and no uh, dry glass underneath. So we used that as a comparison for the rest of it. This area here is basically the hull ready to be coated in uh, Jodomastic. This is the Jodomastic that's been put on. It's a two pack epoxy tough as nails lay it on really thick the guys did and once this is cured that's when they go through and start using what they're doing there now a uh, a epoxy filler so two layers of epoxy filler were put on to build it back up again fill all the voids and then they black it out and as you can see here it's all sanded back to make the hull smooth ready for um, a primer uh, and then the anti-foul. So, yeah, testing once again to make sure we haven't got excessive moisture uh, in the primed. Uh, not much we can do about it, but, yeah, just, just wanted to, out of interest to see how much moisture we had. Uh, from there, okay, so the uh, Joe Damascus gone, the filler's on, and now, what he's putting on now is Sigma Cover. So Sigma Cover 270, I think it is. It's a, once again, an epoxy primer and sealer that works as a barrier coat of everything underneath. And this is all, then a, this is a um, PPG product. I went with the ABC3 uh, this time. So once that Sigma cover's on, as a, they do what's called a hot coat, first coat of anti foul was blue, so we know where we're at color coding wise when I go through it. And then two coats of black straight after, while they're still tacky, one on top of the other. And that was basically the refinishing process. This guy that did that, Marn from Boatworks, from um, uh, Cass Anti-Fouling um, Solutions. Uh, yeah, top gun with the spray and his refinishing background, uh, second to none. So uh, all airless spray application, nothing rolled on. And the finish, yeah, basically, as you'll see in a minute, was um yeah first class you wouldn't even know that there was a uh anything on there you can see there that's basically the finished product ready to go back into the water uh very happy with that whether it lasts uh, a long time um i'll tell you in the next video but hopefully yeah i'll get five ten years before we've got to do anything else to another barrier coat